All right, so let's have a look at the guitars in the final mix. Um, yes. And I'd like to point out that we are looking at version 5, revision 20. So uh, we used Duka as a kind of a test balloon uh, to find out which sounds we wanted in it uh, or on the whole album. And I guess it's the song which got by far the most revisions. So let's take a look at the rhythm guitar in the mix. Um, what I did was to double each side because you recorded only left right and I doubled uh, each side. So I have four tracks in total, uh, which I used to blend some amp sounds. And um, well, the first amp sound I used is nothing but uh, Jens Bogren's uh, amp knob which is probably the simplest uh, amp plug-in there is, but it just sounds good, so why not use it? I actually thought I would, I would uh, later replace it with something else, but why? Why would I uh, change it if it gave me everything I needed? Um, so apart from the amp plug-in, we have some EQ going on to make it a little less muddy. Let's listen to it without the EQ on it. You can see I chopped off some low end, which we don't need. I could have even chopped off more. Um, and I boosted a bit in the 1 to 4k area to, to make it a bit more aggressive and I took out some of the harsh uh, hurting um, highs and just some overall control for the low mid buildups so that it sounds a bit cleaner. Um, next thing I have on is a multiband compressor which does basically nothing in this part as we can see I think it's only in the in the um, low mids that it's working a tiny tiny bit <laughs> hardly anything but it just helps again to control um, the sound to make it more stable basically to prevent buildups. Then I have an EQ which is not even active. I used it on certain songs um, with automation. If I had the feeling that too much was going on at the same time and I had to thin out the sound even more, I didn't use that here. And then it goes to a guitar bus with um, it forgot that I own it. So, with a tape machine uh, on it. Okay. Which does quite a lot. The charm of tape is that it chops off those artificial sounding high frequencies and it mm, sounds... And you can clearly hear that. You can. It's, it's actually not subtle at all. Yeah, it's uh, really like um, basically compressing the sound in a way. It, it sounds more round and uh, compact. <laughs> Then we have another EQ, just uh, another low cut. And here is a dynamic EQ. Exactly for those mean buildups. And just some, uh, some more corrections that I felt were needed after all the tracks ended up on this bus. And last but not least, well, no, not last, but oh, no, I'm lying. There is even more. <laughs> Cornev's uh, Amplified Processor, which is a fantastic plugin. Um, it's worth its money for this function alone for the insufferable mid-range filter. Um, let's listen to that in solo. It, it It's a special filter that takes out those harsh 
frequencies uh, in distorted guitars. <laughs> You can clearly hear this chainsaw noise going on when I don't enable it and it, yeah, it just yeah. cleans up the whole track. Apart from that, the plugin doesn't do much. I add a bit of stereo width on the whole bus. Let's listen to the whole bus actually. <laughs> And I have a tiny bit of EQ going on, but I have to say the EQ is, is pretty heavy handed in here. So tiny, tiny changes make a big difference, but mm. that's almost all no compression because not needed. Mm. Okay. Um, so uh, you said one of the tracks was done with the amp knob. What sound did you use on the other one? Um, I used STL tone hub. Um, and that's some kind of a Howard Benson preset, which just sounded fine. Let's listen to it. It's got a lot less distortion, but it's yes. got also more low end and more bottom than the uh, amp knob. Yeah. yeah. Let's listen to them together. was the combination of the best of both worlds yes they add up really nicely yeah um and the processing is basically the same when it comes to the plug-in chain maybe with a bit of different settings yeah i took out a bit more highs on the stl um but apart from that it's basically the same all mm. ending up here and the last thing on the guitar bus is uh, another multi-band multi -band compressor. It again cleans up. That's so important because we have so much going on that we, we don't want to have any disturbing frequencies. Um, mm -hmm. it, it really needs to get tidied up. Uh, this was the big learning curve for me here. Hence, another EQ, another dynamic EQ, actually. And last but not least, uh, the track spacer which um, is a plugin that reacts dynamically to other incoming sources. Um, in this case, I used it for the snare primarily. So if the snare hits, the frequencies that are important for the punch of the snare get ducked in the guitar in this very moment. Okay. You can see it working if we listen to the whole song. <laughs> It's quite heavy handed actually. I mean, it's only 16.9% in the mix, but uh, it pushes the guitar as soon as the snare hits and it pushes it a lot. Hmm. So we get more clarity and, and impact for the snare. Yes, yeah, so we like stuff to be pushed. I know, that's why I did it. <laughs> 